You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another friendly episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. Friendly indeed. My name's Rob, and this is episode number 863. Hope you're having a great day. Looking forward to hanging out with you here today. Yeah, definitely. And so for many of you who are getting ready to take your recurrency test, um, I've got another question for you. All right. So you may see this on the exam. You may not. And don't forget, if you need to study up for any of these questions, you can just go to thedroneu.com or droneu.education and take any of these quizzes and tests online. Go through the material. Again, I highly recommend everyone go through Ted's airspace class one more time. It's really, really powerful. All right. So question of the day is the quote unquote taxiway ending end quote marker. That's the question. Answer choices. Identifies area where aircraft are prohibited. Provides general taxing direction to name taxiway or indicates taxiway does not continue. So I'll say this one more time. I know you'll get this one right, Rob. The taxiway ending marker indicates taxiway does not continue. The taxiway ending marker identifies area where aircraft are prohibited. The taxiway ending marker provides general taxing direction to name taxiway. What's the answer? To be continued? Or are we answering it now? I'd say, boy, this is uh, embarrassing. I'd say where it ends. So you're saying that it is answer A indicates taxiway does not continue. Yeah. You right. You got that one right. <laughs> Do I pass with a 50%? <laughs> yeah, we're one question deep. <laughs> well, no, yeah. Yesterday's question I missed. So oh, well, we're one, really not doing good. On one for two. <laughs> Don't forget, guys, you can study uh, for, for the exam. Droneu.education. All right, Rob, what do we got going on today here? What, what, what's going on? Well, what we've got is another friend from Australia, which I think is pretty cool. Um, hearing more and more we folks need, that are listening in Australia, which, recruit, man, we appreciate. We need to recruit someone in Australia and someone in the UK and branch drone you out. I think there's a guy in Australia that we could talk about I doing that. I think you should talk to that guy. We'll talk. We just made about a decision it. here. You see how this works? <laughs> Been having business meetings on these. <laughs> you go, Rob. <laughs> I literally do have a guy in mind, and if he's listening, he probably knows who he is, though we've never talked about it. Does his name start mm. with an S? I think it does. Does his first name end with an E? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I was thinking about the same person. <laughs> nice. Very nice. So now you know who you are. All right. Let's listen to the question. Hi guys, Mac here from Australia. First of all, I gotta say that I really love the show. I listen to it all the time in the car. My question, I would like to make a video of a construction site over a 12 month period, showing not just the construction of the building, but the trees and vegetation in the area. I'm thinking about 200 square meters. And what I would like to do is every week, I would like my drone to fly the same pattern, capture the same video, and then at the end of the year, get two seconds from every video, string them together into a 360 video of the construction. I was just wondering if you could let me know how such a thing could be achieved in a nice manner to get fluid video from cut to cut. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Don't forget, guys, if you have a question of your own, go to askadroneu.com. We would love to hear from you, mm -hmm. just like we heard from Matt. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this is one of the questions that a lot of people are wondering about. What's cool is we know that the Mavic 2 Pro can do this, right? He could use that for it. Uh, ooh, ooh, gosh, that's a hard question. Really? The hyper, okay. Because the hyperlapse mode on the Mavic 2 Pro is really awesome, and they have an orbit mode but you have to set the point of interest with your finger instead of like actually flying over the area and like setting it. So are you saying like, he's talking about a pretty large area. You think that's too big? Yeah, I wouldn't, what? I honestly would use something else other than the Mavic 2 Pro for this. Um, I would use my Phantom if it was working right now, but. Damn. Yeah, we're getting the Inspire back here. Pretty soon, much brand so. new too. 
I know. Anyways, that's yeah. another story that for is another, another story. day. Anyway, so never. what I would do, so there's two things. So let me give you my train of thought and then how you should do this and an easier way to do it. So if he's trying to do a big orbit, the key for this orbit is ensuring that it's the same orbit every single time he goes out there. Hmm. Okay, that's step number one. Step number two is making sure he has the same camera orientation each time, the same tilt each time, the same white balance each time, the same exposure each time. Uh, so that it all looks, you know, seamless. Is that true even though, like, the conditions w- will be different every time? No, the exposure can change and whatnot. It's just the white balance you really want to try to set because, um, like, for example, um, in a mapping project, I set my white balance from cloudy to sunny. I should have just left it sunny because hmm. even though the, it was getting cloudier and whatnot, my map looked all screwed up. Interesting. So, okay. I would just say that, no, I would maintain the settings. So but anyway, what okay. to do is if you're flying a Phantom and Inspire 2 M600, you would go into intelligent flight modes, into point of interest, fly over the point that you wish to fly at whatever altitude. So if you know it's going to be a five-story building, okay, let's fly at 100 feet each time. So 100 feet in elevation, point straight down. I would see if you could like leave something there, like a piece of tape or a, a piece of Velcro so that you knew that was your point of interest for every single flight. Meaning like on the top of the building or Uh something? Hmm. Yeah, if that's possible. If not, it's okay because we're going to talk about a second uh, way to do this here in a second. Once you set that point, then you would set your radius. You want to make sure that you cover the entire scale of the building. So you want to know how big the building is. Uh, You may have to do like a five, six, seven hundred foot radius. If I were you, I would just run a point of interest at set radius, at set speed, um, and, you know, just simply kind of do that. So just automate that flight. Automate the flight. Try it once. See how the speed is. Because oftentimes people do these orbits and the speed is too fast. So the shutter essentially is you're getting like motion blur, which is not good in mm. this situation and scenario. Now, that being said, what, let's say you set your elevation to 100 feet and the radius is 600 feet and you're going 8 miles an hour. But that's totally fine. Are you going to record video or are you going to record um, photos? A photo, you're going to get more of the hyperlapse effect, but it's going to also be a lot more work to do. You simply go into your camera settings, go to picture type, and it says, you know, uh, just one HDR, AEB, or timed. You want to do timed. You want to make sure that the camera is set to JPEG. When it's set to JPEG, you get the two and three second option instead of just a five second option with RAW. That's because of the bus speed of the processor. So if you, you're trying to shoot RAW images, it won't let you do anything slower than a, a five second interval. Now, if you are considering a 600 foot radius at 100 feet in AGL, a five second interval is actually probably okay if you want to shoot this whole thing in RAW, which I recommend because then you have the ultimate flexibility in the images you can essentially edit all of the images together in one time lapse and make it seamless. The other option is just shoot, you know, a video and maintain your altitude, maintain your speed and do the same video and the same flight plan every single time and then you would just merge those together. So remember the key variables in that is that you have the same point of interest, you've got the same speed, the same tilt of the camera, which by the way, one thing I love on the Mavic 2 Pro is actually tells you the angle of the tilt of the camera now in the feed, which is really cool. I was wondering about that when you said you need to have the same angle Mm because how are you going to know? On the Inspire 2, it does it as well. On the Phantom 4, I'm not sure. You may have to like you know, make a mark uh, and say, I'm three marks below the red circle, like, so that you know. Gotcha. So real quick on that point of video versus images, what would you do? In all honesty, I'd probably do both because you can Mm. never go back to the site once you've already shot it. And once they've built more. Exactly. And the thing is with photos, I can edit all the photos and then crop down in the photos to choose exactly where I want to show in the time lapse itself. So if I wanted to show different areas, I could. So honestly, I would do both. Now, I would not do it in the way that I just described it, though. I would use probably Litchi or UGCS. Both are great applications. And now Litchi even works on a crystal sky, so I probably use that. But you can set the flight plan for the orbit, the camera tilt, all these settings, lock it in, save the flight plan, pull it up every single time you're there. And just boom, run the same thing over and over and over and over and over. And then when you're transitioning the video um, in your timeline, let's say that you're editing the video, all you would do is chop the video at the same location. So let's say that the orbit ends up being, um, let's say, 2,200 feet around or something like that. Yeah, let's just say 2,200 feet. Just It's not the right math, but let's just go with 2,200 feet. 
let's say our first cut would be at 150 feet into that orbit, and the next cut would be at 400 feet, and the next cut would be at 600 feet, and the next cut would be at 800 feet. That way you could see the, se the seamless motion would be there, and then at each cut, that's when you would change the time. And if you're having trouble hmm. with the seamless motion, uh, motion... Uh, VFX has some new uh, transitions that are um, directional transitions, and you can make them very, very short, like literally 15 frames so that the eye doesn't even see it. If you are seeing some um, areas where uh, you're not getting a smooth transition, also what you can do is blade the clip before the transition and blade the clip after the transition, merge those clips together, and do warp stabilizer on it to give it even more stability if you're not getting that look you want. So that could get pretty tedious work-wise, yep. but you're going to have a really nice product. I Well, this is why, I mean, you can charge a lot of money these, for these because for marketing, yeah. they're they're amazing. And I would do video. I would use Litchi. I would test everything every single time I'm there. I would come at a set schedule so everyone knows when you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with construction, you do typically have to wear a high-vis vest um, if you are on-site, on-property. This is also something you probably don't have to do from on-site or on-property. So a couple questions. Number one, how long are you going to have to be there each time you go? And would you go, like, weekly? So with that size of orbit... With that size of orbit, you're probably only going to be able to fly it twice in one battery. So you would get your photos, and then you get your video, and then I would always want to do a backup. So for me, I would say I'd probably be there just to be safe, take my time, make sure I did everything right, 90 minutes. Okay, so that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. And so then my next... I could probably get it done in 40, but I don't like to rush things, especially drone jobs, because uh, you know, you're only as good as your, your last job, and you have to take every job as if it was your last if you want to continue having jobs. Yeah, well, and again, you talk about the fact that they're constantly building, right? So it's changing all the time. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow it's going to be different than it was when you were there, and going back is always more expensive than getting it right if you just spent more time when you were there. Number two, is this something that you are putting together as you go? You could keep it in one timeline and then save the timeline if you're using Final Cut Pro. That is possible. One thing I did want to say, in order to help smooth this hyperlapse out, if you want to extend the distance that you're flying, number one, so you increase the radius and slow down the drone, say four or five miles, when you do that, you'll notice that it's even smoother and you're going to have a lot more data, but mm. you're going to have a lot more stuff to work with. Right. And, and I have to say, in general, that point of interest, and even I'm noticing with hyperlapse, because I'm watching my hyperlapses from yesterday with the Mavic 2 Pro, you really have to fly a long distance and give it a lot of time um, to do these hyperlapses. And it sucks your battery and it sucks your memory card. I blew through a 32 gig card with like four hyperlapses. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So. so so, okay, you get to the end of 12 months. Um, and if it were me, I would want to keep it sort of up to date. Like every time I'm going out there, I'm adding to it, right? And keeping sort of this working file, if you will. Well, the next thing too is, I mean, like how often is he going to go out there? Because let's say he's got, yeah. uh, you know, if you really do the math on this, you'll be better. So you figure out your radius, pi r squared. That's your total distance. How many visits are you going to have? So how many cuts are you going to have in between in that total distance? That way you can kind of figure out what to do. Um, so we talked already about whether you're going to keep this as a kind of a working file such that at any given point, it would effectively be a deliverable. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Ah, so you're minimizing the output editing time at the end. Yeah, I mean, that would be a huge job if you waited to the end, I would think. After, mm. I mean, if you're talking once a week, and let's just say you're out there, I mean, theoretically 52 weeks, that'd be a huge job. I, just, I, I would appreciate the probably, opportunity to do it as you go. probably the right way to do it is your way, because you're also backing up the data. And I am horrible at backing up data. Like, it is my nemesis at this moment. And Well, and the other thing that you're figuring out is, well, I guess, I don't know, based on what you've described, you would you be able to make adjustments? Like, if you realize Ooh, that's not really working well, mm -hmm. you could potentially make some minor adjustments and tweaks to what you're doing. Agreed. And so you would figure that out. How long would something like this be as a finished product? Any idea? 30 seconds. The really? two a minute. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, 
So you just have to do the math and time lapses. Like, okay, how many frames per second is your video going to be? And then how are you going to do pictures or video? Because if you're doing pictures, then each picture represents a frame in your video. If you're doing 30 frames per second, then you know that to cover up one second, you need 30 pictures. And then if you're going to showcase that over time, then you now know how many pictures you need for, say, 60 seconds. Yeah, that's crazy. I just had in my mind to be four or five minutes long, but I guess that could get really boring watching a building go up for four or five minutes. Yeah, I think it's much cooler to see it faster. Yeah, totally. So, so. The, the other question that we didn't finalize the answer to is how many times you would go out? Would you go out weekly? I'd probably go out weekly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Because a weekly would probably end up being a second of each frame. Okay. So that gets you right in there close to 60 seconds then mm -hmm. by the time it's all said and done. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, 52, 52 weeks. weeks ish, 60 seconds. Yeah. Duh, Paul. Where's That's my brain. Whoa. That was bad. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you were pulling a, a Robin overthinking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what that was about. Um, anyway, well, I hope that answers the question. I know people in construction deliverables are doing this. Um, it does really help sell their projects. And I know that they are budgeting money for doing it. So, um, yeah, I mean, if... And what you, a cool... You, piece to give the client at the end of a project too. Like part of obviously your main deliverable is the building or the structure or whatever it is you're building. But to add this kind of with that, I, I think would be really, really cool. Beyond obviously the marketing and advertising benefits that you'd get from it. So it's seventy eight hours of work at ninety minutes. And I did at a hundred and twenty five dollars an hour, which would be nine thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's probably more than what anyone would really be willing to pay. I think you could probably get a couple grand to five grand for this. Mm -hmm. But then again, if you're doing this as a full feature production and this is a simple upsell, you could do this as an easy $2,500, $3,000 upsell because, I mean, like the quality of the product afterwards is amazing. If anyone's thinking of yeah. doing this, go find, a, go find a construction project that's going on. Go offer to do it for free. That way you have a product to show people. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it's going to be 100 times easier to, to sell it when you can show it. So, Yeah, maybe try to find something that's going to go up quick. As your first one, not something that's wow. going to take 12 minutes, I mean 12 months. I'm holding back the jokes right now. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Upload that question. We would love to hear it. Also, thank you for all your reviews. Uh, we really thank you for being here. Without you, we wouldn't be here. And if you want to share this show with a friend, we would greatly appreciate that as well. If you want to join the community of drone pilots who are willing to learn better themselves and really create a niche in their area, then you've got to check out DroneU. Go to DroneU.education. And by the way, you can do so, get access to everything as a trial for 14 days for one buck. So if you've been thinking about it, Go check it out. All you got to do is go to the website, thedroneu.com, and the opportunity to do that will pop up. Do it now. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.